Hey crafters, it's me Jen Evers with Quality Crafts and welcome to another free play Friday and it's especially awesome because it is spring break for me so woohoo we're done for a whole week. I'm so excited I can't even tell you. Also we have a sale weekend so we're gonna have a private patron sale tonight for an hour <clears throat> and then a four hour sale for the public tomorrow right here on this same channel. I can't wait there's so much cool stuff. Actually, there was so much extra cool stuff, and I finally got the little thing saying, hey, you're live, um, that I wasn't able to even price it all, because it's quite a job to take stuff and then have to price it and get it ready and sometimes re remove sticky labels and things like that. So we're going to do some really fun stuff tonight, Free Play Friday, for those of you guys who don't know or you're just joining me for your first video ever or whatever. Um, we do just techniques and different things and it's tight tutorial style and I show you how to do something. Yay, spring break. Hi, Brenda, Sharon, Debbie, Penny, Suzette. Um, so if you're new, then I'm that's just an idea of what Free Play Friday is all about. Every Friday, 5 p.m., meet me here. I'll teach you something maybe that's new to you or maybe it's a revisited something I've done. I have like a thousand videos so it's very possible we could be redoing things from back when I started and that's okay because sometimes we get reminded of stuff and then we're like oh yeah I have that stuff in my drawer and I haven't used it in a year or whatever and so it's always fun to do something different I call it free play Friday because you never know what you're gonna get however right now we're in the middle of a stencil series this is um, stencil series number four in the series and it's called stencils and embossing um, the resist technique. So what I'm talking about is here is a clear embossed stencil and then I put ink over the top of it and then I like to just rub the excess ink off of there <clears throat> and it shows through. Now I used clear embossing powder. You can also use white if you want it to be really stark white. It just depends on what you want. Hi Tarita. Beautiful butterfly. Hello. Um, so this is what we're aiming for. And I wanted to show that up front. I like to see well, like what the big picture is before I get started um, when I watch videos too. And so here are some of the things that I use. Of course, you're going to need Versamark. And also, um, like I said, I used clear. I keep mine in these like little rubber mink containers because it's just easier. You'll see. I'm not going to do a lot of this because we're going to want to do more playing with the inks and stuff. <laughs> So that Bradley wants to know, did you order the inks yet? I have not. I want to make sure that everyone that wants to order gets to order. And this weekend will be the last time that anyone can order. And then I will be ordering them. Is that okay, Suzette? Let me know. I mean, leave a comment. If you want me to order them right away, I can. Um, there might be a, just a handful of people that didn't hear about it yet. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. If you're wondering what that is, and I don't have a picture um, set and ready to go that I can flick on here. But it's... Um, the archival the archival inks from ranger but they're in um distress ink colors and it's a bundle so i mean you can get them separately but everyone that's chosen to buy um this pre-order has bought the whole bundle and i don't have the little thing right in front of me um i believe it's three different sets and then a case that you can put them all in and that's 40. So if anyone's interested in doing that, so basically what happens is that can create a resist um, effect as well because the archival inks are oil-based and then you put water-based ones over the top of them. They're really cool. Oh, Suzette, I'm so sorry. That stinks. You, We can talk later. That really sucks. I'm, I'm sad for you. But you will find something good. You will find, maybe you'll find something better. Maybe this is God opening a door for you. Don't give up. Um, so back to this. Um, if anybody wants to order that, they can. I'll be ordering probably at the end of this weekend. I'm hoping to do that. Hey, Jamie. Happy, happy Friday. Woo -woo. Um, I've got tons of stencils here. I've got a number stencil, which is the one that I showed you originally. Um, a splat stencil. <clears throat> stars a flower one and so I'm gonna be showing you some of these some of these things well I hope that the video will kind of cheer you up a little bit and that you have a little bit of fun yep he'll open another door for you don't don't sweat it um, leaves here is a little a sun a sun ray uh, roses and like I call that weeds 
I don't know what that is. Um, a snow one. These are the ones I've already done. And I'm going to show you how to do um, what I did here. Which is real basic, but maybe you've not seen it before. I always like watching the magic happen, so we'll do it again. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult because it's really um, flimsy, but that's a wave one. We've got a brick wall. The beehive. I think this is like a floral pattern. Leafy pattern. Do you see the leaves coming out? Like floral leaves. And then this one has three different ones on it. Now, these are all... Um, these are all ones that I'm having in my shop, in my sale um, tonight and tomorrow. So if you are interested in these kind of stencils, let me know um, sh by showing up to the store. Um, the sale tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time here. And um, if you're already a patron, it's too late to join for the sale tonight. But if you want to join for the next one, we have a sale every other week. And <laughs> every other weekend. So let me just get started with this. This one was super fun, but let me show you how I got to that. So these are already, you can sort of see the um, the shiny. These have already been embossed, and we're going to do some fun um, coloring of these in just a few moments. But I want to show you how I got to that point. So super easy, so super quick. i got to make a couple more here pieces here. Don't forget... For this, you need an embossing powder, clear or white, a Versamark pad, your stencil, and a heat gun. Um, if you want to use one of these, which is, this is my baby powder thing. I don't know where my other little baggie went. This, this gets rid of the static. I haven't been using that one today, but you totally can. If you're coming out with not a very clear design, then you just, just say so. I'm, if you're wondering what I'm doing just standing here, so there's a whole, you know, live chat going on and I like to not miss everything that's being said, so I like try to read that in between showing you cool stuff. And I probably honestly should have had cut these earlier, but I got so excited making all the other ones, I forgot to create more for today. All right. I'm going to use an extra sheet of paper that I have here that I was inking on. Um, you don't have to. You can just do it right on whatever you're using. I'm going to use that for inking, not for this part. Sorry if that like came out all wrong. So this is Versamark Water Star Watermark Stamp Pad. It's just a clear ink pad. See how my finger is shiny? It's just a clear sticky ink. That's all it is. Gives the um, embossing powder something to stick to. So let's do one of the ones that I have not done yet. I really like this fun print here that you can see if I hold it over the blue. So I'm going to do that part. I'll probably get a little bit of the other ones and that's okay because I'm not going to be real perfect with this. So you just take your... And by the way, the... Um, oh, I was hoping to have... The uh, Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station, S-T-A-Y, Station. Um, I was really hoping to have those here by the sale, and they have not shipped yet. So I don't have them. Um, so probably the next sale, two more weeks. Hopefully we'll have them then. That's what um, it's for, is this kind of stenciling stuff. That's why I was kind of hoping that would all kind of just flow, but you know. Sometimes you don't get things like that. I'm going to flip this around. You want to make sure that you have a place that you can hang on to that you're not going to have to ink on, that you can make sure this all stays together. If you want to put it in one of your stamp, um, what do I have? I got a couple of them. Your stamp platforms like uh, Tim Holtz has one and then um, Petunia has one, the Misty, and then there's, there's a whole bunch of other ones. You can use those to do this. I think it's a little bit harder to get in there, but... Um, they have magnets that'll hold it down. That's what the station is all about. So they are on order. I'm just waiting for them to come in. You just smoosh the sticky stuff right in through your stencil. You want to make sure that it's really heavily covered if you want the, the more dense you want this to look. So do you see how on the edges it kind of started going through? 
because I didn't push heavy, heavy ink on there. So I didn't get it really loaded with powder. But like, it's no big deal unless you unless you're striving for some kind of really super perfect whatever. But um, you'll see that as we go through here. So I'm going to make sure that I get a lot of ink on there. And then I'm just going to pick this up. Don't have to wash this right away because this is just a sticky ink that's going to stay wet for a while. And you can just wipe it off with a baby wipe whenever you're ready to do it. So there's no real rush. So if you're new to this and you're like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, take your time. You got time. It's made to stay wet. And then I'm going to hang on to the corner that I did not stamp. Hey, Kathy Godwin and Linda. And I'm just going to put some of this powder on and then tap it off. And this is where I'm talking about, like, if you um, want to take your paper ahead of time, if you're if you're getting a lot sticking to where you don't want it to stick, that's what these anti-static bags are for. You just put a little bit on there, rub it onto your paper like this. It'll cover up um, the oils from your finger, the dirt, anything that got on your paper, and it'll stop it from, you know, having the powder cling to all these little places you don't want them to cling. So, like, if you're embossing white onto a black cardstock, that is where you're going to see huge differences. Huge, huge differences because one little flake of white on black, you're going to be able to see that. Otherwise, not that big of a deal, especially if they're doing clear on white or white on white. You'd be all good. So I made sure to put my cover on my powder so that doesn't blow all over. And then I'm going to hang on to this and tilt it in the light <clears throat> because when I heat this, as soon as it turns shiny, I want to keep the heat moving. If you hold it until it turns shiny and you keep it there, then it'll turn dull again. And that's basically, you're just burning it right into the paper and it's no longer shiny and it's no longer going to resist. So I, once in a while I get a person that says, I just can't make this work. Usually it's because they've held the heat on way too long and it's just burnished that powder right back into the paper. It's just like, you know, it's gone, it's done. So as soon as you see it shining, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to move on. Hopefully you can see the way I have it tilted, but I'm not sure. I'm going to stand up. You see there where it turns shiny? I'm going to keep moving now. I'm not going to stay in that spot. Call it like chasing the shine. As soon as this turns shiny, just keep chasing it until it's all shiny. Don't run your gun back and forth like this. That's not going to help. You have to have some solid heat on there to make it turn and then just keep slowly moving. Okay, and then I just tilt it in the light and make sure, you know, are there any areas that um, you'll notice it right away. If there's any areas you missed, they won't look shiny. And if you run your finger over it, you might even have some of the little sandy powder fall off. Um, let's do another one because we're going to have time to play around with the inks after that. So let me just throw this one down that I powdered. So I really want to see this one. I really want to see this brick wall type of deal here. This is going to be really cool. So if you don't, if you don't want, so what's going to happen here is that my brick wall is going to be white. Okay. Because that's where I'm putting the powder and it's going to be on all those things. So the inner workings of that brick wall, um, the, like where, where the cement and stuff would be, that's going to be what's colored later on. Okay, so if you want this to be the brick wall that's red, then instead of embossing like we're doing today, you're going to want to put your ink here. Does that make sense? And then you can emboss the whole darn thing if you want. But I'm just letting you know, this isn't going to look like a red brick wall because the bricks are going to actually be white. But I want to see how it turns out. I think it's going to be really cool. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Put it in the comments. Pop it into here. We have a lot of people watching that are also experienced and they can help you out with a question if I miss it. You can put it all in caps too. That always helps me notice you. 
<clears throat> I try to do like have these first this this half and then tilt it and do the other half that way I'm not spilling this powder all over the place because it's kind of a pain in the behind to clean up so you don't want to get it all over the place which is why I always try to put the cover right back on as I'm going so that I don't end up with that all over <clears throat> Kathy Albrey Albrey am I saying that right Monica, hello. We've got a couple of new people here tonight, don't we? If, we're, if you're new, put some little hearts or something in there so that I can recognize you. And then flip it around. Don't burn your hands. Don't burn your fingers. If you need to use um, a tweezers, the reverse tweezers are always really good for that. A reverse tweezer, in case you're wondering. It's the kind of tweezer that if you're not if you're not squeezing it, it holds the paper for you. Okay, so I'm not I don't have to hold it. There's still a powder all over the place, even though I was careful with it. Um when you squeeze it lets go. So it's the opposite. Reverse tweezers. So if you need to use a tweezer because your heat you don't want your hands to get too close to the heat, then use a reverse tweezer. Those are awesome. I got a couple of different kinds of those. So there's another one, and we did two of them now. And now we're just going to have some fun um, for about a half an hour just playing with the different kind of inks. You guys can just feel free to shout out and tell me what kind, different kind of colors maybe you want to use or whatnot. Let's go ahead and do this one first. And even though I know that um, my bricks aren't going to be red, I'm going to do the background red anyway because I want to see what it looks like. It's pronounced like boob without the B, and the R-E is silent. R-E is silent. So it's oob. Kathy oob. Is that right? Kathy oob. I love seeing these new names and new people in here. It's fun. Super fun. All right, let's rub some candied apple on here and see how we how we did. You can also put sprays on here. Maybe I'll grab a couple of sprays from behind me. I know I have some. <clears throat> you can also do um, oob. Um, also do ink straight to paper if you want, like this. But that look, looks to me like it's just basically just sitting on the resist part. Does that make sense? Do you see? Um, and then I'm going to grab a tissue. You can use a paper towel, whatever you have. And that's where you're going to rub on the top like this and take off some of the stuff that is sitting on the top of that resist. And like I said, I chose clear. So some of this is going to stain my, my clear embossing powder. It's not going to be stark white. If you want stark white, you can use stark white embossing powder. I wonder if a ba wet baby white would, would make a difference too. This one came out a lot clearer, I think, than the red. But also, you can uh, you can do, like, let's say if you use your stamp, your stamp platform, you can re-stamp a couple of times your Versamark as well to make sure that you get a lot of... Um, the Versamark ink on there so you get more powder so that it's not as bumpy. So let's see if I can get this really close so you can see what I'm talking about. Do you see how there's like little bumps in there and the ink is seeping through? That's what I'm talking about. Let's 
still looks cool though. And you can go as dark or as light as you want. And I always wipe off the excess off the top of the resist so that corner is a little bit darker. That one's not my favorite. I'm going to hit that with a baby wipe and see if that makes a difference. Where did my baby wipes fly off to? <clears throat> I'm going to have to run and get another bag. Maybe I ran out. I don't think I ran out. What the hey? I was just using them like 10 seconds before I started my video, I swear. I'll grab another one. I got two more. You don't want to use the wet too much though. Because if you use too much wet, you know what's going to happen in the paper. It's just going to peel up and turn really grody. Yeah, like this is a very distressed look, right? Oh, look at that. Now we're getting some of that more off of there. Now we're getting, like I said, don't rub, don't rub back and forth and go crazy because if you do, you're just going to end up with um, just a mess. But there we go. We got a lot more ink off of there. Now it's a lot lighter. Cool beans. But it does react. The um, I'm using the Distress Oxides and it does react to water. So the color of the red changed a bit too. Looks almost like a um, an orange now, but no, I don't think it looks orange. It's just much lighter than it was, but it's distressed and it looks kind of cool. You could do this with browns. That'd be really cool. It'd look like kind of like a stony path too. <laughs> do you remember that? Jamie, do you remember? I shouldn't say it because we used to, we used to use it with a name. I'm sure you remember. It's not nice. Not, not nice, Jen. <laughs> Let me flip this over so we can use the other side. <clears throat> I like this yellow. It's called mustard seed. I'm going to start with a little yellow on the bottom here. There's another one in here that I'm going to want to do like a, um, you can use your, uh, what do you call them? Your brayers too. If you want to brayer on some color, I think that would also work nicely. Rusty hinge. Now let's use this one. Distress oxide. Carved pumpkin. So when I hold it up to this orange, do you still think it looks like super orange? I think it looks more, maybe more pink. Yeah. Of course, it always, it doesn't always come out the perfect color on the video either. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this to let's blend a little bit anyways a little little blending yellow into orange and then orange into red Yeah, looks orange there. So Linda and Kathy Oob, do you guys live near each other? Or do you just know each other online? I just happened to catch that you guys were saying hi to each other and I thought maybe you, maybe that was, you invited a friend. still use a little bit of this. Ooh. 
in my tissue. Oh well, yeah, and then that's gonna pick up some of the red, move that around. You could get some really cool looks with that if you add the water. Oh, that's cool. cool. Just having fun. Just online. That's neat. I like that. We're gonna do distress inks. These are the oxides. If we do some distress inks, then we can drop some water on and make that look really cool too. These ones though, we should be able to put colors on top of colors if we're using the oxides. Let me, let's see what other color would look cool on there. Uh, maybe a blue. I'm try a faded jean on there and see what happens with that. See how the blue went over the top of the red? And that usually doesn't happen with ink, so it would probably just maybe fade in. This is what I like about the oxide inks. That's neat. Let's try to do a little in the corner too. Wake some off of that. What happens if we try to put yellow on blue? Maybe I need to heat it. Maybe I just need to dry it a little bit. Maybe use a red? That stinks. What the heck? Maybe I need to use it a little bit more. <laughs> Let's try a yellow on there. These are, like I said, these are still oxides. I'm just kind of playing around with the effects of what the oxides do too, especially if some of you guys aren't familiar with it. Yellow on top of the blue. And we actually are getting some yellow on top of the blue. Check that out. Other inks would not do that. That looks really cool. Hey, Elise. Yeah, we're just, we're kind of just farting around with different colors and stuff. Yellow and blue makes green, but that looks more yellow than green to me. They don't mix in the same ways, although you can mix them on the, but we're just, we're doing mostly stencils today. So I digress and jump all over the place, guys. Sorry about that. Here's another one we did, Elise. Stencils and clear embossing powder. And then we did, that one was the intro introduction. So let's go ahead and get another piece of that paper. I've got a ton of it from school, so we're all good. I really am in a quandary as to what happened that, that last baby wipes like what the what the heck did I do with them I'm just gonna wipe off some of this extra ink that got on here and I got a towel nearby I'm gonna dry it off too and we're gonna play with some more colors and I think I'm gonna grab a couple inks too because I wanted to do the inks the last video and I didn't get a chance went off on, on a tangent I'm sure so if I do sprays, which I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this spray box in. So let's grab this one and see if we can get a nice resist with that. This is the one that's got all like the, the, um, like the coffee stains and the splats. I don't know if you can see it very clearly. All right. So here are some sprays. Put these off on the side here. Hopefully I won't cover up all my stuff that I'm looking for, which I tend to do. This one is Melted Chocolate. Let's try this one. Melted Chocolate. Mm. 
all my all my sprays are not guaranteed to work because I very rarely use them. Can't get that one to work. I'll have to look at it later. What else do I have? That would be fun to spray. Oh, what's this one? This is a Tattered Angel Shimmer Mist. Oh, sweet. This one's working. Very sporadic. And I know I have like this one, Dilusions. This one is a white. So let's go ahead and... I'm not shaking it, I'm rolling it, because I heard that if you shake it, it'll go up the, possibly get the little spray, you know, tube that's in there all gunked up. I, I wanted to add this because I thought maybe this would go well with the brown. Oh no, it looks to me like I need to start using my sprays more. There's a lesson to be learned here. I did not make the spray box. You can buy them this way and they just set up. Of course, you can tell that I've been spraying in this one a lot. I'm bummed that I didn't haven't used these enough to keep them. Oh, oh, now it's going. Now it's going. <laughs> All over the place. I'm going to get to the size of my mat in just a second because I can't remember off the top of my head. It's like 18 by 20 or something like that. It's pretty big. Pretty, pretty big. Now, I don't know if these sprays are going to, like, come off that resist. Let's check it out. They did, but we got to have a little bit more of solid coverage because do you see the coffee stain right here and the splats? Splat, splat, splat. We need to add some more color. So I'm going to take, like, maybe a brown. I'm going to have to be careful because I really kind of wet this down. Let's give it a little chill time. And you find a brown, a brown, how about walnut stain? That would work. Don't want to heat it too much because we've got that um, embossing powder on there, so we don't want to forget about that. Somebody wanted to know how big my blue mat is. It is. Oh, 24 inches by almost 16. About 24 by 16. Let's see what we can get off of here. We can pull out some of those. There it is. Some of these splats by just going over the top of them. There they are. <laughs> Got to put my paper down. It's all right. I'll grab a paper towel and see if that makes a difference. <clears throat> hey, Kelly. See, and this is also grungy because if you see you look real close you can see that the ink is going right through now this was a lot more solid of a spot right there see that how it went through that one so what if we take a little bit of this We can just take some of that brown right off, off of that resist spot and make it a little bit whiter if we want. What a difference. Wow. Just make sure that you're not rubbing real hard on the paper because the paper is just going to peel and become a mess. Um, you can do it on the resist spot because it now has a layer of like that plasticky um, melted powder, you know. So that turned out really cool looking. I could see putting that on a background with coffee beans and a coffee cup. That's really fun. I'm 
we have oh but there's more we've got a whole bunch here whole bunch i want to do this one because we've got the stars on here let's see what kind of really cool background we can make with the stars if we do like maybe some dark blue like faded jeans i'm thinking you know what let's do um let's do with this one since we used the star stencil let's do some distress ink so we can do some little like splotty looks i'll explain you in just a second some of you guys already know what i'm talking about but like okay so we got blueprint sketch that's a dark faded jeans is a dark i'm but i'm moving to distress inks instead of oxides we've got a black maybe we want a little aged mahogany in there i don't know no i know like a purple maybe would look really cool i just have to slide some of mine over so I can find my inks behind it because I've got like all my oxides up front. Purple is evading me. Dusty Concord might work. Yeah, that's a pretty dark one. We could try that. All right, let's make the magic happen. some purple on here. Thanks, Elise. I'm just trying to get it really dark because you always get a better look, of course, obviously, if you've got darker stuff on. And then I'm going to add some of the other colors as well. Just want to make sure it gets really dark. Scrapbook Diva. Does somebody want to fill her in or should I? Basically, we're doing um, stencils and clear embossing powder. You can also use white. Let's use... Let's try a little bit of this blueprint sketch. Oh, that's pretty. Crafty magic, Jamie said. Crafty magic. So right now we're we're adding inks. Um, we've already done some ink inking with the oxides and right now we're doing um, and I need to take off this sweater because it's getting warm in here. Now we're adding inks and we're we're watching the magic happen. So we used our stencils to create um, the backgrounds, like the hidden backgrounds, if you will. <laughs> And stencils. Now, obviously, you can do this with stamps too, but stencils are super quick as well. If you've missed any of the previous ones that we've done on this um this is just another different color of blue I'm gonna kind of mix these two together they're all linked in the description box below number video one video two and video three now the reason why I decided to do regular distress ink on this one is because I'm gonna do some little droplets of water and we're going to get some um, little stars in here that aren't necessarily star shaped. They'll be round shaped, obviously, because we'll be dripping water. I used white cardstock in the background, Peggy, and then I used clear embossing powder, but you can definitely use white embossing powder. That'd be fine too. I'm going to leave this corner a little bit lighter. 
kind of like it's getting darker as it goes up. That looks really cool. You can also throw in little bits of yellow in the background too if you wanted. I think that'd be neat. I ended up not using the aged mahogany, but that's okay. Now I gotta find my little bottle of water here. Nope, oh, I moved them up here. I don't want the mic up. I guess that's my only choice. What happened to my regular water? See, things just get up and walk away in here. <laughs> so I've got mic on, not this one, I've got mic on this big one. It's sitting on the bottom, so I'm just going to get some of that up and moving. And you'll see that it looks really pretty. But I'm going to put this on my fingers because I want to just do some drops. Oh, those are big drops. You can use um, a toothbrush and do some really little drops too. Whatever you want to do. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pick some of that up. Oh man, you can really see that mica. That is so pretty. Is that, are you guys seeing that? Here we go. And so wherever those drops went, it's like super shiny. This is a shimmer. That's cool. That, that is really neat. <laughs> I really like this one. Turned out cool. You can also flick um, wet, like white paint too. I used to have a tube of white paint sitting around here. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you know what? I saw this this too that I used on um, the umbrella not too long ago. But anyway, I don't think I need to like wet down those stars or anything. I think they're plenty, plenty white. And I really like the look of that. Now we're going to have mica and beautiful shimmer everywhere. I love it. Love it like crazy. You can do that all on your own too. If you buy that mica powder, you can get like a little white jar of mica powder from uh, the dollar store. Sometimes they have them. It's called eyeshadow. <laughs> Just dump a little white eyeshadow in with your water. Add a little bit of a glue or a mixative so that there's something that will make it stick. And make your own spray. That'd be really cool too. All right, so I've got these left. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of time. We can only we can only do one more. Do we want to do the leaves? You guys got to vote the sun ray or this little flower pattern. There's like three flowers on here. Flowers, sun ray, or leaves. You guys have to have to decide and then because we're going to have to wrap it up real quick here so while you guys are um deciding i'm going to go ahead and put this out here that all of these stencils that we've used today and more i'm going to have um at the sale tonight and tomorrow so if you like stencils tune in um we also have more um stamps we have um some paper things we've got a lot of paper we've got different um, inks. We've got some storage stuff. We've got lots of stuff going on. We've got one for the leaves, one for the flowers. Um, if Penny, if you'll do, go ahead and decide who, which one wins so that I know. Um, dun -dun. Tonight is just for patrons only. They get an hour um, ahead of everybody to see what's new. Um, and sometimes they get discounts that maybe you might not see. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because you have the opportunity to become a patron. All you have to do is go to qualitycrafts.com, click on the Patreon link, and join us. So the sale for everybody tomorrow is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's my time. So check that out if you're um, East or West Coast. And also um, our regular 
uh, videos are Wednesday and Friday nights at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that helps. Leaves wins. Okay, so that's the one we're going to do. Let me flip this over. Grab the leaves. So let's go ahead and do some typical leaf colors. We'll do a couple of different greens so it's not all not all the same. I got a bunch of greens here. I like this one. Bundled sage. Let's start with that. So yeah, um, I'm not going to go into a big spiel at the end of my video today. If you want to know more, definitely join us on Facebook at Quality Crafts. Otherwise, if you can't figure that out or um, that's hard to remember, you just go ahead and go to qualitycrafts.com. There's everything is there to help you out. That's a pretty color. I really like that. Bundled sage. So at the end of the video today, as soon as I'm done with this one, I'm not going to go over all of the stuff that I normally go over since I kind of had a chance to say it just now. <laughs> Jamie, Moses, I'm slow, she says. Ooh, that's pretty too. Green is really one of my favorite colors. It said it's a mold, mold on. We got someone that joined Quality Crafts just now. Thank you, Rita, for joining. We will get you added as soon as we can. That looks really cool. Let's add a little bit of that Lucky Clover because it's dark. Or Pine Needles, one of the two. Maybe some pine needles. Scrappy Crafter, if, if, um, only if Penny can handle it for you, because I'm not going to have any time after this video between this video and the sale to add you. But if Penny's willing to, um, she can add you if that's okay. So Penny, do you have time? If not, you know, let us know. That's okay. I always encourage people to join during the week before just to make darn sure that we get you in there so you're not missing anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Hey, Sharon Schaefer. And Rita Brown, too. Welcome, Rita. We'll get you guys added as soon as we can. They are um, joining us in the quality group. And I really want this to be a little bit more white. So I'm going to grab my baby wipe. Man, look at the difference that makes when you just go in with that little baby wipe. That's just crazy. It's like stark white. I love that. Ooh, that's so pretty. So next time, we'll probably take a bunch of these backgrounds that we created and come up with some card ideas. Stencil card ideas. And then we've got a couple more that we hadn't gotten to. So maybe we'll do a little bit more of that next time and hit that sun since Jamie wanted the sun and we didn't make it. I know some of you other guys um, voted sun too. And I think that would be a really fun one. So let me go ahead and just clean up my space a tad here. Looks like I got a whole bunch of something off of there. Some greens and yellows. <laughs> and then we'll do just a quick review of what we've created tonight because I like to do that. We've got the leaves that we just finished. The background night sky with the shimmer dots. You can make the dots bigger or smaller, whatever you like. This one turned out really cool. The like... I dropped coffee all over my desk mess. <laughs> I really like that one. The numbers. The brick wall. And this one that we were playing around with. Um, the oxides on top of each other. Look now that after that sat a little while. It is turning a little bit more green than yellow. But the blue went over the top of the red, and it didn't necessarily make a purple. I wonder what happens if we add a little. I just can't let it alone. 
Let's add a little water to that and see what happens to it. Just kind of muddied it, I think. Anyway, sorry, I just, I'm curious. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's what we got tonight. I hope that you guys will join us next Friday for another fun stencil video. And then I think maybe after that we'll be wrapping up stencils unless there's some really pressing thing that we want to get to. Um, but we'll be making some cards, so join us next Friday. Again, the sale is this weekend, tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then the next following weekend, there's no sale. So it's every other Saturday. If you want to know if there's any cancellations or um, if there's things that are moving around or something different is happening or something new is happening, you can sign up on the qualitycrafts.com page by going to the store and then clicking sign up so that you can get the emails if there's a pre-order coming out or um, we're changing something or whatnot. Cancellations, things like that usually happen in the Quality Crafts community group. So go ahead and join us there. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.